everybody. Welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study. So we're going to get started and, and jump into some worship and uh, spend some time in the Lord's presence. And then we're going to dig into the Word tonight, uh, which the Word is finding rest in God. And uh, I am preaching that tonight because I need to hear it. <laughs> because I need, I need rest, and I need to, to rest more often than I do. Um, so we're going we're gonna to preach that tonight and, and dig into it and study it and, and learn about that. But um, as we get started in worship, if you guys would just stand with me, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Before we do, the only uh, announcement that we have coming up is, well, a couple of announcements. This, this Sunday morning, we're starting a, uh, we've, we've ended our series of battle that we've been in the last few Sunday mornings. This Sunday morning, we're starting a, uh, a series, uh, it, it may be a series, it may only be two weeks or possibly three at the most, but we're going to be talking about friends. So, so friends, followers, and contacts is what we're going to be talking about over the next couple of weeks. So uh, come out and, and be a part of that, the importance of friends in our lives. So let's pray and, uh, and jump into worship tonight. Lord, we just give you praise, honor, and glory. I thank you, Father, for, for meeting every need that we have. Lord, I just pray that you would fill this place tonight, that you would fill this temple and then fill our temple, Lord that we would fill you tonight, that, that you, would, you wouldn't leave us unchanged, Lord. But that as we worship, as we study your word, that when we leave tonight, we would know that we know that we've been in your presence. And Father, that you would speak to us those things that, that we need to hear from you. Lord, but that you would have your way in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Let's worship. A little bit different tonight. I'm, I'm leading one song. So I want to read a scripture based upon a lot of the songs that we sing are based on scripture. And we don't always talk about that. But in Isaiah chapter 40, he talks about Israelites being in captivity and then being weakened in their strength. And he reminds us in the scripture, chapter 40, verse 27, Why say thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel, my way is high from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over for my God. Has thou not known, as thou hast not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, feigneth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them they have not, no might. He encircheth strength, increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. And he goes on to say, But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 40. Strength arises, we wait upon the Lord, we will wait. Upon the Lord we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, He's our God. He reigns forever. Our hope, He's our hope. Our strong deliverer. You are the Forever, he's our hope. Our hope, our 
worship with the band. Glory to God. Everybody. Sprinkle rises, we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Sprinkle rises, we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Upon the Lord. Hallelujah. your strength. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He's so faithful. His grace, it's enough. It is your faithfulness, oh So with a sinner's heart, you lead us by still waters and to mercy, and nothing can keep us apart. So remember. covers all of our sin. Thank you, God, that you don't see sin. You see the righteousness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It's so good to be in the house of God with you tonight, to worship together, to love on each other. Praise you, Jesus. and 
stories of what they think you're like but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're a good good father to you are to you are to you are and I'm loved by you to I am to I am to I am I've seen many searching for answers far and wide but I for answers only you provide because you know just what we need before we say a word you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and I'm loved by you it's who I am it's who I He's a good, good father. Amen. 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 So good to see everybody tonight. And you can be seated. And we're going to continue to worship by receiving our gifts tonight, our gifts and offering, offering and tithes tonight. Um, so our ushers are going to make themselves available to you. And I'm just going to pray quickly over those. And we're going to flow back into, into worship for just a moment longer. And then we'll get into the word. All right. 
Father, I just thank you tonight that we can come together and be in your presence. Lord, I pray that, uh, that you would just meet the needs of the people sitting in this room, Lord. Father, there's so many needs that are in this room. And as we worship, Lord, the needs are heavy. They, they weigh on backs and, and minds, Lord. They weigh on emotions. And I, I just pray, Father, that, that you would just give a, a touch to those that need a special touch from you tonight. But, Lord, I pray over the givers, over the tithers, Lord, that you would bless them according to the principles of your word. And, Father, that you would take our gifts and multiply them so that First AG can do more for the kingdom for you, Lord. And, Father, we just give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You call me out upon the waters, the great unknown, where feet may you in the mystery in oceans deep my faith will stand and I will call upon your name keep my eyes above the waves when oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace for I And you are mine. Your grace abounds in deepest waters. Your sovereign hand will be my guide. Thank you for your hand. Where feet may fail. And fear surrounds me. You've never failed, and you won't start now. And I will call upon your name. The name Jesus. You keep my eyes above the waves. When oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. For I
Let's just give the Lord some worship for a few moments. Amen. Tonight feels like a little bit of a, of a different night for me, and, and uh, I don't have a very long message uh, for you tonight, so I'm, I'm going to teach on finding rest in God, but the Lord has been dealing with me and my spirit throughout the day that after I get done teaching tonight, that we should spend some time as a, as a group around these altars in prayer. And uh, how many of you know that prayer is the catalyst for everything that we need in our life? Prayer is the catalyst for everything this church needs. Prayer is the catalyst for everything you need personally. So I'm, I'm going to teach for a little bit, and then we're going to open up these altars for a time that you can, uh, we'll invite the band back up or part of the band back up. If some of them need to get around the altars, they can do that. Um, and just play some worship music and just spend some time in prayer, and you can get alone. You can do it at the altar. You can do it in your seat if you're more comfortable doing that, Um, but just spend some time, a few minutes to end the night tonight uh, in prayer, and then if you need specific prayer and you want people to come in agreement with you, then, of course, we'll be up here to do that as well, Uh, but I just really, really in my spirit feel strongly that we're supposed to end tonight with a time of just corporate prayer, prayer time. Uh, so not a full prayer service, but just as, as soon as we're done tonight, we're going to start the worship back up and then just come up and spend some time in prayer for some personal needs uh, and some church needs. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to be teaching tonight. If you would turn with me to Matthew chapter 11, uh, we're going we're gonna to bounce a little bit in, into some different scriptures. But Matthew chapter 11 is our main scripture for the night, uh, verse 28, and I'll give you a moment to get there. If you did not bring a Bible, there's some Bibles in the seats. Uh, it, there may be one on your row if you need one. Or as, all, as I use, uh, there's Version Bible app, which is available on your phone. Uh, it is uh, a Bible app that's had millions of downloads, and it's absolutely free. It was designed by a church uh, called Life Church. And uh, Craig Rochelle, Pastor Greg Craig Rochelle is the pastor of that church, and uh, God laid it on his heart to provide resources across the world uh, for free, not only to people, but to pastors and churches. So they do that, and they created Version Bible app, in case you're, you're unaware of that. But there's hundreds and hundreds, possibly even thousands of Bible studies on Version Bible app. And uh, it's really cool because you can set an alarm and a reminder on there. And it will actually wake you up and remind you that it's time to read your, your Bible app. So there's some, there's some awesome stuff on there. It, it will also keep track of, for you on how many days you've been in the Word. Uh, so I, I know my wife loves that feature. Uh, so she will have, it's called a streak. So she, there, there was one point in time, I remember, how far were you in a streak on the Bible app and you lost it? 167. So she was 167 days in of reading on the Version Bible app, and we had a full schedule that day. I mean, it was just one of those days. And we got home late at night, laid down in bed, and she grabs her phone and goes, oh, I got to keep my streak alive. I got to read the Bible. And she, she grabs the phone and starts to go into her app and realizes it's 12.01. <laughs> and she, she lost her streak. She cried herself to sleep. It was sad, but... But, but the cool thing is, without getting religious about it, you can use the app <laughs> to do some, some amazing things in your life, and there's, there's tons of resources on there for you. So, so I encourage you that if you are having a hard time finding a Bible study or finding something to use to help you uh, read and study the Bible on a regular basis, uh, as often as we walk around like this, uh, we can use that resource and redeem it for something uh, that God loves, which is us spending time with him, reading his word. Amen. So uh, you can always do that. And then, of course, uh, we usually have it on screen. I don't, I don't know if we'll have it on screen tonight. I'm not sure. I, no, we won't. There's, there's nobody up there. So we won't have it on screen tonight. So we're going to read in Matthew chapter 11, starting in verse 28. And it reads like this. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Amen. I absolutely, uh, I think some of us need that scripture deep in our spirit tonight. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, 
and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for just the opportunity to get up here and speak and teach your word, Lord. And as always, I know that I'm not worthy to do it, Lord, but I know that you have made me capable and able to do it. Father, I just pray that you would use me tonight as your vessel, that the, whatever you have poured in, that you will pour out on your people. I pray, Father, that you would put gates upon my lips, that anything that wouldn't need to be said tonight would not be said. Anything that needs to be said, I pray that I would hear from the prompting of the Holy Spirit so that I would speak it. But most of all, Father, I just, I feel heavy-hearted tonight, Lord. And I pray over those in this room who are struggling, those in this room who are uh, under a lot of pressure. Father, I just pray that, that you would make yourself known to them like you've never had before. That tonight as we study your word, as we spend time in prayer afterwards, Lord, that they would feel and experience a newness in them, Lord. That you would relieve the burden. That you would lift the weight off of their shoulders. Father, that their emotions would be purged. That their heart would be cleansed. That their mind would be cleansed. And Father, we just, we know that we can't do that on our own. And it requires you. And we give you praise and glory for that in Jesus' name. Amen. So, as we jump into finding rest in God tonight, one of the, the hardest things that I, for me to do is to rest. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely a difficult, difficult thing for me to do. I was, I was reading in my version Bible study this morning, <laughs> and someone, someone wrote in that Bible study, they, they wrote that, Everything works better if you just unplug it for a few moments. And when I, when I first got to the church here and, and Pastor Rushing and, and Sister Betty were taking me through the process of the building and everything, and we have a copy, a very large, really cool copy machine in the office, and that, that copy machine does almost anything you want it to do. It, the only thing it has not done for me yet is make me pancakes. If, if it made me pancakes, like I would, I'd just stay at the office all the time, right? But it doesn't make pancakes, but it does almost everything else. But there was a, there was a point in time uh, when I was trying to do something on the copier, and it just wouldn't do it. Like it was being cantankerous. Have you ever had a piece of equipment just be cantankerous with you? Right? It was being cantankerous. And I just didn't know, didn't know how to fix it. And I'm thinking, well, I'm going to have to call this 1-800 number on the side of this copier. And Pastor Rushing comes rolling into the office. And he said, what's going on, Steve? And, and I said, well, I'm, I'm trying to get this copier to do something, and it's not doing it. And he goes, well, just unplug it. You know, and I laughed, and, and I said, well, if I unplug it, it won't have any power to do what I want it to do. You know, and he said, no. He goes, unplug it, wait a few minutes, plug it back in, and it'll be fine. And I thought, well, it's worth a shot. So I unplugged the copier. We waited about 10 seconds, plugged it back in, and wouldn't you know it, it was just fine. <laughs> it did everything I asked it to do after that. And as, as I was reading that this morning, I thought about that copier, and then I thought about us, that sometimes we don't work properly. You know, sometimes we, we find kinks in, in what we're supposed to be doing, and we run into kinks, and we run into, man, we're just not getting it done. We're messing things up, right? And, and you recognize and realize that you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. You're messing things up. You're just not getting it done. And, and the truth of the matter is when you, we run into those seasons or those moments or those times, it's so important for us just to unplug, just to unplug and reset. My, my cell phone... Uh, every, every once in a while gives me grief. And I, I know that I know, but I forget because cell phones these days stay on just all the time, right? When you go to bed at night, you plug it in, it's on all night long. It's on all day long, right? That's just what you do. And sometimes the cell phone just stops working right. And when you start researching or Googling what to do about the problem, the very first thing they say is do a, do a hard shutdown, Shut it down. Turn it completely off. You have to hold like several buttons in tandem to get these new cell phones to shut off because there's no easy power button like there used to be. 
You know, there used to be just a, an easy power button, but they're not made to turn off all the time. They're made just to be on all the time. But sometimes being on all the time causes friction or causes problems, and they just need a hard reset. So you just have to hold these two buttons in, and then it pops up on the screen, do you really want to turn it off? And you go, yes, I really want to turn it off. And, and you slide it to the right, and it says, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. I want to turn it off. And you, and you shut it off, and you got to wait for it to cycle down, and then you wait a few minutes, and then you press the power button to power it back up, and it pop, mine pops up with an Apple on the screen, right? Uh, because Apple is the right brand to be using. <laughs> right, Barb? No, we got some people are Android users, I know. I am praying for you to get saved. No, I'm, I'm, I'm totally kidding. But, but mine and Apple pops up on the screen and starts cycling, and then the phone pops up. And usually, 99% of the time, then it starts working right. It starts, all the texts start coming in, you know, everything that you've missed that hasn't been working starts working, right? But it just needs a second to reset. But here, here's my problem with rest. And, and I would say that a lot of people probably feel the same way. But resting to me feels ir- irresponsible. Yeah, amen. I, I got some loud amens on that one. That's the best amen I've gotten in three weeks is yes. <laughs> yes. Resting feels irresponsible. It feels absolutely irresponsible to me. It feels like uh, that to take a day off and do absolutely nothing to me, I feel like I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not being fair to my wife or I'm not being fair to my kids or I'm not being fair to the ministry or I'm not being fair to the church or I'm not being fair uh, to, to, to myself and what I need to get done, you know, and taking a day off for me just feels irresponsible. And my wife feels the same way about me. <laughs> and I know this because when I tell her, okay, honey, I'm going to take this day off and I'm not going to do anything, she goes, great, honey, you got to do that. You need that. And I'm like, oh, thank you, baby. And she goes, but while you're home, you know those bushes need trimmed, and, and you know this wall needs painted, and you know this, 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 and 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 this, right? And she, she gives me a honeydew list, right? So I feel irresponsible if I sit home all day and I don't get at least something accomplished off of that list that she said. So for me, I feel like if I take time just to decompress and unplug that I'm cheating somebody, and then when we get into ministry and you're a pastor, uh, you really feel like if you take a day off and you don't answer phone calls, right? Because as a pastor, and, and uh, there's a couple of them sitting in the room here, as a pastor, your phone typically never stops, right? And, and nowadays, it's 10 times worse because not only do you have phone calls, but you have text messages and you have messenger, right? So if you take a day off and I decide today I'm setting my cell phone on the dresser, right? And I'm not going to do anything and I'm going to veg out all day. And usually for me, that means eat a lot of ice cream and watch TV, right? So I'm going to veg out all day long. And, and, and then about a, an hour in, I start getting this nervous tick, right? Because I don't have my cell phone on me. And then I start worrying somebody probably needs me, there's probably something that needs to be done, right? And, and then I'll go in and check my phone, and there will always be a text message or a message or something that somebody just needs a response to or somebody needs me to go somewhere and be something or do something or meet somebody, and there's always something going on, right? But, but that's my life, but, but I'm not alone because you guys all deal with the same thing in different ways. There's always somebody pulling you in some direction or another, There's always somebody that needs a little bit of your time, right? And the truth is that no matter what you do, you're always cheating somebody. So you're either, no matter what I do, if I I choose a day and I do this, I may be cheating my family or I may be cheating the office or I may be cheating my ministry or I may be cheating me, but I'm cheating somebody all the time. So it's, so it's important to always make sure that your priorities are in line because you're doing the things and listening to God because you do the things that God wants you to do. And if we do that, we're assured to always be in his will, doing the things he wants us to do. And one of the things that he cares about the most for us is rest. He wants us to be rested. And there's some reasons behind that. 
but he definitely wants us to be rested. Now, you may not, may not have a problem taking time for physical rest. However, there are many ways that we lose our rest. And maybe you don't have a problem taking a day off and, and, and not doing anything physically. But, and some of us are restless like that. Some of us are restless in body. You cannot just sit, right? How many of you are, are in the room tonight? You just cannot sit, right? You, you sit down and you think of 30 things that need to get done, right? And, you, and if you sit down, you start thinking of these things that need to get done, and you jump up and you start doing these things. You start running around and trying to get all of this stuff done. Some of us are restless in spirit. So you may not be restless in body tonight, but some of us are restless in spirit. That means you could be sitting completely still on a day off doing nothing, but you're spending the entire day worrying, anxious, stressed out, totally restless in spirit. You just don't know what to do with yourself, right? You may be doing absolutely nothing physical, but your spirit is restless. Everything about you on the inside is restless. Some of us are restless in mind. So you could be doing nothing, your emotions might be fine, but your mind is constantly going, right? And I would say that women suffer from that more than men, right? That's because men, it's real easy for us to think about nothing. Some of us, but most women never think about nothing, right? If you were in our Friday night redemption couples night, you heard that, right? So, so ladies probably have a harder time with that, but you're always thinking, always trying to decide on something, always trying to plan on something, and you never just shut it off, right? So, so truth be told, many of us in today's society never really rest. We never really rest, there's never a point in time because we're either restless in body or we're restless in mind or we're restless in spirit. But the truth of the matter is that God is calling us to a specific type of rest that, that re-energizes us. God calls us to an unplug. And an unplug in today's world means that you leave your computer off, you, you set your cell phone aside, and you leave the radio off, you leave the TV off, and you just sit in silence, maybe you read a book, you do something other than technology-related. Uh, but, but I'm talking about that on a deeper level, that you unplug from the stresses of your life, you unplug from relationship issues, you unplug from worry and concern about your kids that are, that are far away. You're, you unplug from, from everything that's going on that taxes you, your system. You completely unplug, and you plug into God. So you can unplug from the world. You can unplug from your stressors, unplug from everything, and just plug into God. And if we plug into God, he begins to rejuvenate us. He begins to refresh us, and he not only refreshes us physically, but he refreshes us mentally, and he refreshes us spiritually. Amen? So we start to move in a different direction. So how many of you know that if we burn ourselves out physically, spiritually, or mentally, uh, then we can't do what God has asked us to do? Right? Everybody in this room, amen, everybody, high five, everybody in this room is a minister to some degree right? We're all called to minister to somebody, and your ministry may just be in your household. It may just be your family, but we're all called to minister to somebody, and what God has asked you to do and to be ready for, we can't do if we're totally burned out spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally. We can't do anything that God asked us to do. So is it, so is it any wonder that the devil likes to step on the gas? You know, the devil rides shotgun sometimes in our car, and he'll just reach over and step on the gas and speed things up in your life. He'll start throwing things at you left and right, right? I've had, I've had a couple of those days, right, where everything seems to be under attack. Everything seems to be sped up. There, there seems to be a lot of issues, things I've got to deal with, right? Sometimes, sometimes uh, uh, my old pastor used to say, what the, what the devil can't stop, he accelerates, so if he can't stop you from doing God's will in your life, he'll accelerate everything else around you so that you get so burned out that you stop focusing on what God's actual will is that you do, right? So we have to remember that. So God gave us the Sabbath, and if we look at the Sabbath in the book of Exodus chapter 20, and you can turn there if you want, but I'm going to be reading the scripture, or you can just make a note of it. But in Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11, in the English Standard Version, it reads like this. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. 
Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant, or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. So from the beginning with his relationship with the children of Israel, God made a command that they would take a day of rest right? He commanded it. Now, the children of Israel took 12 commandments and turned them into over 600, right? So they, they had a tendency to take things to the umpteenth level, right? So God commanded that they take a day for rest, and they turned it into a day to pick on everybody else who wasn't resting, right? They turned it on a day to inspect everybody else's household to make sure they were doing what God said to do, right? So God had given them a command for them, and they turned it into a command to be religious, Right. So so the Sabbath could be something that can be out of hand. It can get out of hand religious or it can get out of hand lazy. It can, it can go both ways. Somebody can quote the Sabbath as an excuse to be lazy and somebody can quote the Sabbath as an excuse to be religious. But it can get out of hand both ways. But neither way is the way God designed it for us. Right. And when we get how many of you know that uh, Jesus brought the heart of the law? Right, And when we go into the New Testament, we see the heart of the law, that the law wasn't done away with. We just see the heart of it now. Right, so, so in the Old Testament, when it said, do not commit adultery, in the New Testament, it comes in and says, but if you've even looked upon a woman with lust in your eyes, you've committed adultery. Right, It's, it's turned into the heart of it. In the Old Testament, it said, thou shalt not kill. But in the New Testament, it comes in and says, but if you've even desired in your heart to kill somebody, then you've broke the law. Right? So, so the Old Testament days was about keeping the law. And in the Old Testament, it says this is the heart of the law. So in the Old Testament, if it's talking about keeping the Sabbath, what is the heart of the Sabbath? Well, we find the heart of the Sabbath in Mark chapter 2, verse 27. English Standard Version, it says, And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. He said to them, The Sabbath was made for man. Not man made for the Sabbath. So religious people took a Sabbath, a, 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 a law that God created and, and commanded, and they took it and made it a religious thing instead of a relationship thing. They took it and made it something to pick on. Matter of fact, it got so bad that in, in, Mark, in Matthew chapter 12, we just read 11, 28 through 30. Well, it follows up in, in chapter 12, and, and these are the Pharisees trying to kept, catch Jesus breaking the Sabbath. It got so bad they started, they're following God around trying to catch him breaking the Sabbath, right? Now, we, we have that perspective today. Maybe they didn't fully understand that perspective back then, but that's really what they were doing. They were following God along going, shame, shame, shame on you, right? They were following God along trying to catch God breaking the Sabbath. And it gets so crazy that, you know, they pick a handful of grain, the religious people flip out. It's a Sabbath. I can't believe you're harvesting wheat. I, I took a little like handful of grain off a of vine, you know? And, and then they, they freak out because uh, he heals somebody on the Sabbath. He does a good thing on the Sabbath and they, and they freak out. They, they absolutely lose their mind because he healed somebody. And it gets so bad that, that in verse 14, it says, then the Pharisees went out and plotted against him, him being Jesus, him being God. They went out and plotted against God and how they might destroy him. So I just wonder, <laughs> you know, with the, with the Pharisees, it was, it was not okay to heal somebody, <laughs> on the Sabbath, but it was okay to go have a secret meeting and plot the death of somebody on the Sabbath, right? So, so it's a, the Pharisees had it twisted. So you can, you can get twisted with the Sabbath. Uh, matter of fact, that's why we have a Seventh Adventist uh, churches, right? Because people got religious with the Sabbath, and they created a whole religion around that and called it the Seventh-day Adventist, and everybody else that has church on Sunday, well, you're just going to hell, right? And they got religious about the Sabbath, right? That's, that's why you see stuff like that. But then people can have a tendency to take the Sabbath and make it a lazy thing, right? So we got to understand that we, if, we, if we do decide to take a day off, but somebody's in need, like it's okay to still help them, right? It's okay. And, and it's okay to step out and still do these things, because, but we need to do it when God says it's okay to do it. So a lot of resting and finding rest in God is following what God wants us to do. 
And if we do what God wants us to do most of the time, we'll feel way better about ourselves, about our situations. We'll feel way better energy-wise. We'll feel way better if we just listen to God most of the time. Amen? Isn't that true? So So the first part is this. God desires our rest so much that he commanded it. He actually commanded us to rest. And then in Mark, we see the heart behind it, that he commanded us to rest because he designed it for us. Because he knows what we need. He knows what's a need of our heart. He knows what's a need of our body. Because he designed us. He built us. He created us. He knows what we need. He commanded us to take a day of rest because we need it. Now, does that mean that you have to do it uh, exactly one way and this is the only way to do it and you must always do it that way? No, because that takes it religious, right? It's not a religious thing. It's a God, how do you want me to do it? God, what, what day, God, I can take this day and rest. What do you want me to do during that time? How do you want me to plug into you, right? How do you want me to unplug from my normal life and just plug into you so that I can get rejuvenated? So he knows our limitations. He cares about our well-being. And when we're tired, how many of you know that we're more prone to be a victim of the enemy? Good, well-meaning Christians can be a total tool of Satan when they're tired. Christians with a heart after God can be destructive and destroying with their tongue when they're tired. They can be absolutely worn out and just snap and break somebody's spirit with their tongue just because they're worn out. And it doesn't necessarily mean worn out physically, but they may be worn out spiritually or they may be worn out emotionally. And they can snap and cause destruction because they're tired. And the enemy knows when you're tired and he pops things up in your path. So when we're tired is usually when more and more stuff starts piling on us, doesn't it? Like when we say uh, when it uh, it rains, it pours. That's what I was looking for. Thank you, honey. (laughs) When it rains, it pours. She knows my mind. Oh, praise Jesus. God made us one. So when it, when it rains, it pours, right? And, and we have sayings like that because it's true. When we're tired and we're dealing with stuff, it's usually when more stuff pops up. More stuff comes on it. And that's because the enemy knows that when you're wore out, you're more prone to do things that you normally wouldn't do if you were fresh. So if I'm fresh, there's some things that I wouldn't do that I might do if I'm tired, right? Uh, if, if you're fresh, uh, you probably would pursue your spouse, Instead of pursuing something other than your spouse if you're too tired, right? You fall into, into traps when you're tired instead of pursuing what you're supposed to pursue, right? So there's times when I'm full of energy that I pursue my wife because that's how God created me. And then if I'm worn out, I pursue the TV and a bowl of ice cream. I don't pursue my wife, Right? And, and it's, it's times like this where uh, when you're worn out, you're more prone to snap with anger than you would if you were fresh. Because if you're fresh and you've got, you got a fresh spirit and fresh emotions and, and you, fresh energy and, you, and you're not tired and somebody does something, you can actually think how to deal with that situation biblically, how to deal with that situation Christ-like. But if you're tired and worn out, you, all, you, you lose control usually of what's coming out of your mouth. And then you just snap, right? And we, we snap with anger instead of controlling what we're saying. Uh, sometimes if we're tired, we say something we shouldn't have said. Or when we're tired, we can even react with violence when we normally would have avoided that kind of situation. But when we're tired, either physically, spiritually, or mentally, we react in ways that's counter, uh, counter, um, counter to who we're supposed to be. Right? It's counter-biblical. It's counter to who we're supposed to be because we're so tired. How many of you know that decisions made with a tired mind are rarely good decisions? You should never make a decision when you're exhausted and worn out. And that doesn't just include physically, but emotionally and spiritually as well. When you're exhausted and wore out, you should never, ever make a decision. You unplug. You get refreshed. And then you make a decision based on a fresh mind and a fresh outlook. So number two is this. We must be able to do what God asks us when he asks us to. But if we're too busy being tired and and worn out and we're not taking the time to refresh and we're not taking the time to rest, chances are when God does ask you to meet a need or do something, you're going to be too exhausted to do it. 
We're going to be too tired to meet a need in the way that God asks us to do. If we fill our mind, spirit, and even our itinerary with other things more impertinent to, to the goals at hand, it leaves out what's most important, which is what God wants in our life, right? Joyce Myers uh, used to say, or said this one time, I was listening to Joyce Myers, and she said that she, was, she, she labeled out her itinerary everywhere she had been in the last 10 days and everywhere she had to go and the many times she spoke. And then she said, and she cried out to God and said, God, I can't believe you're doing this to me. I'm just exhausted. I'm wore out. I can't speak another time. Uh, why are you doing this to me? And, and God answered her and said, Joyce, I didn't make your schedule. You know, but sometimes we can even begin to blame God <laughs> for our own schedule, our own decisions, the own things that we decide that we have to do, that we must do, right? But how many of you know we prioritize things sometimes without seeking God for what he wants us to prioritize? Sometimes God will say, I want you to do these three things, and we think he, we're doing these 13 things for God, right? And, and the other 10 things may not be bad things, but they're just not priority things, and God knows that these three things we can do and get done and stay fresh, but these 13 things are going to destroy us. Or it's going to wear us out, right? But we pick up the 13 things instead of just seeking God for the three that he wants us to do. So it's a, it's a matter of trusting God and finding out what God wants of us and being able to do that. Have, have you ever filled out a form and you had multiple options on the form and you had all these options to check and then there was one box that just said other and you fill in the blank? It's kind of like that, right? God gives us these, these multiple choice questions. You can do this, 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 and this, and I want you to check everything that applies, and you check off these four things, and then we find another line that we can add in our own stuff, right? And you check it and start filling it in. I'm going to do this, this, and this too. You know why? Because I'm Superman or I'm Superwoman. I can get it done, but the truth of the matter is we're, we're not. None of us are Superman or Superwoman. We all need rest. We all need time to unplug and time to refresh. Number three tonight is this. When we're adhering to the Sabbath in our lives, we're more open to hearing from God. So when we actually take a Sabbath and take time to rest, and, and I told you that I'm preaching this as much to me as I am to you. There was a, uh, this is how bad I am at, at Sabbath. So last week, after I preached on Sunday, I was absolutely exhausted. And got done at the altars, went and had some lunch, went home, went straight to bed, crashed out. And I told my wife, I'm going to take Monday off. I'm not doing anything Monday. And, and Jessica said, we'll see. <laughs> well, let me tell you this. I did. I, I took Monday off last week. I didn't come to the office. I didn't answer phone calls. I didn't, I didn't respond to any text messages that I can remember. I might have, but I don't think I did. I didn't respond to anything. I just took Monday off. Do you know how bad I had it the rest of the week? Because I am such a control freak that everything in my week has a certain day and time that I do it that coming in on Tuesday made me way more cranky and made me way more worn out because I felt like I was so far behind from taking Monday off. But the truth of the matter is, I didn't ask God <laughs> what I was supposed to do. I just said, I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I'm doing this, right? Well, as I prayed about it and thought about it, God impressed on me, uh, Friday is the day that you're supposed to be taken off, right? And, and God spoke that to me. And then I recognized that if I, Fridays here in the office are my easiest day because I've got everything else done for the week and I'm not stressed out for the weekend, I'm good, Right? So if I listen to God and I do what he wants me to do, I'm in a way better position than if I do it myself, right? So, so trying to do the Sabbath, we need to do it the way God wants us to do it, not the way we want to do it, right? How many of you know that life gets louder the faster we travel? Anybody ever rode a motorcycle, right? The faster you go on the motorcycle, the louder it gets because you got way more wind in your ears the faster you're going, right? Or have you ever driven in a convertible, right? With the top down, the faster you go, the louder it gets in the car. And life is sometimes the same way. The faster we go, the louder life gets. And we've got to take time to pull over, stop, and, and just get quiet so that we can hear the Word of God. There was a time when uh, the prophet of God had, had ran and hid in a cave, you know, and in the scripture, it says that there was a, a mighty rushing wind that came by the mouth of the cave, uh, but God wasn't in it. And it says, and then there was a mighty earthquake, 
that came by the cave, but God wasn't in it. And it goes on, and finally it says, and there was a still, small voice. And that was God. And sometimes if we're driving way too fast, we're missing out on the still, small voice. So we've got to find that time to get alone and get quiet so that we can hear the voice of God. Because God will always talk to you if you set yourself up to listen. If you set yourself up to hear from him, he'll speak. But it's a still, small voice. It's usually not the loudest words in your life. So there's a, there's a scripture that I like to quote from the King James Version, and it goes like this. He leadeth me to exhaustion and runneth me ragged like a river without end. That sound accurate? 23rd Psalm, I think. No, <laughs> that's, that's not it, right? But that's, sometimes that's how we live. Sometimes that's how we do it. Oh, Lord, you leadeth me to exhaustion. Oh, Lord, you runneth me ragged like a river that never ends, right? We, sometimes our life is like that, right? But the, but the real verse says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures, and he leadeth me beside the still waters, right? So God wants that time and those moments with us to make us lie down. He makes us lie down. Do you know that's a, that's a shepherd viewpoint, right? So in, the, in Psalm, the 23rd Psalm was written from a, a shepherd perspective that God is our shepherd, right? It's what it actually says. And, and shepherds make the sheep lie down in green pastures. They make them rest, right? And, and sometimes God has to do that to us. Now, there's been times, and, and I think uh, my mother-in-law may be one of them. <laughs> Can I tell on you for a second? There's been times uh, that my mother-in-law, Diane, would, would, would be like, I am so sick. <laughs> like, like, I don't even know where this came from. I just got so sick. And then she'll go, ah, it's God making me rest. <laughs> Sometimes he'll make you rest. Sometimes he'll, he'll let you get sick just so you stop for a moment. Just so you sit down for a moment, right? And uh, sometimes God will, will make you lie down in green pastures, but then he will also lead you beside still waters. And those are moments that we desperately need for our soul. They're moments that we desperately need in our spirit, right? Because we can easily be compelled to do everything everybody else wants us to do except what God is speaking quietly into our ears because we're not listening. Amen. How many of you know that rest isn't actually found in vacations, days off, couch days? That's not actually where rest is found, right? That's where leisure is found, right? But that's not actually where rest is found. Has anybody came back from vacation more tired than they left? <laughs> Every single time, man. Every single time I come back from vacation, I am more exhausted than when I, I need a rest a couple of days just to get over vacation, right? Vacation isn't rest. True rest is found in God. True rest is found in him. Leisure is found all over the place. Leisure is found on the golf course. Leisure is found on the couch with a TV remote. Leisure is found on vacation, on the beach. But true rest is only found in Jesus Christ. That's the only place that you can find it. Now, if you're about to run out of gas in your car, what's the best thing to do? Say you've got 10 miles left on your little digital screen, and you've got a gas station nine miles away. You turn off the AC. You drive at a moderate speed, right? You slow down. The slower you drive, the less gas consumption you're using, and you drive to the gas station and you fill up, right? And that's, most people know that. But typically in life, this is what we do. We're about to run out of gas, we crank the AC down to 60, crank the radio up, and hit the gas and go as fast as we can, right? And that's sometimes what I think it looks like to God. He's saying, this is a moment you need to slow down, you need to turn off the AC, you need to pull over, you need to refill, you need a moment of rest. And instead, we're cranking the gas and going and going and going. So sometimes it looks like that. In John 15, 5, Jesus lets us know one thing. He says, he is the vine, and we are the branches. When I think about that, the, the truth of the matter is, is that without Jesus, we can't find true life. We can't find true nourishment. We can't find true water 
for our thirst, and we can't find true bread for our hunger. And through Jesus, we find all of those things. And he is, he is the vine, we're the branches. We have to connect to him. So to be the healthiest we can be, which is key for your family, it's key for your marriage, it's key for your kids, it's key for your job, it's key for your ministry, and it's key for yourself. To be the healthiest that you have to be, you have to practice self-care. Self-care is a new word over the last year or so. And if you've gone to conferences and, and stuff like that, you've heard people say talk about self-care. Um, but true self-care dates all the way back to the beginning, right, when God said, I want you to take a Sabbath and plug into me. Because if we take time out of our day and we plug into him, that's the best self-care that we can have is plugging into him, and that's true rest in him. Amen? So I'm not going to ask you to stand. I, if the praise team, any members of the praise team that would like to come up, come up if you um, if you need prayer or want to pray around the altar you don't have to come up at all um, but I would like you guys just to play some worshipful music anything but oceans if you don't mind it, no no offense I just want something other than oceans and um, if you guys would lead us in worship and, and listen if you've got to go do, do what you have to do. Um, but if you're in need tonight of just spending some time in prayer, as they play worship, I'd just like to invite you. That we have a huge altar. <laughs> we have plenty of space, and then we even have front pews up here that are empty that you can use. And I'd just like to invite anybody that just needs, you need to unplug tonight, and you just need to come up and, and lay at the altar and just spend some time with him. And then... After that time, if you want somebody to pray with you, we're, we'll, we'll pray with you. We'll anoint you and believe for you and pray with you. But just, uh, I just want to invite you as they, as they lead us in worship to just come up at, if you feel comfortable. I never 
When it comes with my agenda, I'm sorry. When I forgot that you're enough, take me back to where we start. I open up my heart to you. I just want you, nothing else, oh, nothing else. Nothing else will 